Hey guys, Max here at Happy Viking Games. We're gonna do another intro deck opening here with the uh, the new Dragon's Maze decks. We have all five of them here today. All right, they'll just stand up. Five of the guilds. We have Vizorius, Gruul, Orzhov, Simic, and Rakdos. So we're gonna get a look at them today and see what the cool cards they have in them. Look at the champions and look at the booster packs to see what cards we get. So let's go ahead and start this off with Orzhov. Nice little gray pack here with some booster packs inside of it. And let's see if they still give us one of those crazy information blankets. There's this stuff over here. And let's see here. Typical how to play magic type of thing with the steps and the phases all rolled up into one, like a playmat type of thing. We're not really going to look at this. Uh, and then we have, I guess, a Dragon's Maze information pack here about choosing your guild and whatnot. All completely standard, just throw away stuff that they give you so you can have some interesting appeal to the, to the cards. All right, so let's look at this deck. Let's see what we get here. All right, first card we see here is Tesa. Looks like a champion of our deck. Uh, if any of you watched our stream or any of the recorded matches from our pre-release where we had been start here, uh, you would see a lot of Tesa on the feature matches, and Tesa did a lot of work. Tesa is a very good card, in limited especially. The fact that she just has protection from creatures and has vigilance means that she's clocking you for four damage a turn. Her other effect is somewhat relevant on it, but I mean, the real fact here is that she can block and attack all day with no problems. That's our foil card here. She is definitely the champion of the Orzhov, the Sut. So, keep seeing that for her. Let's look at some of the other cool cards we have. Main Alley Blackguard, just a typical 1 3. This creature from Gate Crash has the Extort, really good. Tithe Drinker. Tithe Drinker is a really cool card from the Sut. Black White, 2 1, Life Link Extort. Definitely a powerhouse and limited. And just overall in general. Alright, let's thumb through the rest of these cards. Some more extort cards. Let's see here. Oh, a rare we get is Crypt Gas. That's really cool. Crypt Gas also being an extort card, but with the ability to mana flare for swamps is really, really cool because it works well with extort. Definitely a really good card to get in this deck. Let's see what else we have in here. Our guild gates. Our basic lands. text message, and the new clue stones, which are like a lot like the key runes, but actually have really cool effects on them by letting you cycle a card. Let's see here. They give you some flair at the end here. Looks like some uncommons. Get the Orzahal. Anyone who played Gate Crash knows how good this card is. Limited. Also saw some constructed play in the Vamp Aura decks. Really good card. Really, really strong card. Life Point and Flying is definitely a thing to scoff at. Riot Control, the new Fog card from the set, uh, might see some interesting interactions in the Turbo Fog deck that people are playing now. All in all, three mana prevent all damage dealt to you and gaining life for creatures that are out. Has its ups and downs, obviously it'll just slow it down a little bit if you're losing, but unless you have something to deal with all the creatures on the field, you're probably not going to get more of this card. But still, for a deck like Turbo Fog that actually uses that to its advantage, it definitely has a place. Uh, let's see, what is this? A Gnaw of the Bone type effect. One of the new split cards in the set. And two cases of Rimmel here. Assassin's Strike. <clears throat> the split cards are interesting. I'm glad they brought them back. The art on them is very cool because it's just a different type of template for a magic card. You have two things going on here. And with the new keyword fuse, if you have the mana, you can definitely cast both sides. It's really cool to see that they brought this back and actually you know, made it so that you can use both this time. This particular one uh, gives your creatures plus one, plus one, and creatures your opponent controls negative one, negative one. So it's a lot worse than Zealous Persecution from Alara days, but it's pretty good and limited. Well, pretty good is a strong word for it. It's interesting. All right, let's see what else we have in here before we go to our booster packs. Sin Collector. Now this is an interesting card. 
Sun Collector has a Tide Hauler Spiller effect where you get to look at your opponent's hand and choose a card and exile it as long as he's on the field. Uh, I'm definitely interested and intrigued by this card because I feel like it might have constructive playability to a lower extent than the sideboard, depending on what the meta evolves into, but it's really cool. Let's see here. Any other interesting cards here? Maul of the Obs that for Odd Art of the Week. Uh, this card, I don't know, like it has an interesting place. It really doesn't, it doesn't like, it doesn't strike me as a strong Orzhov card because, you know, it's all about, like, Orzhov is usually about extorting and just like getting there with incremental damage. But this is, uh, this has an Anthem effect with sacking your creatures, which is kind of interesting. But uh, on a five mana body, and the art is just really, really weird. Yeah. So let's look at some booster packs. Bring all this out of the way. All right, our first booster pack. Let's go ahead and open this out. Drag the maze. Let's see what you got. This is the first pack I've actually got to crack. With, so. Bird token. So our spot where we get a, instead of a basic land, we get a non-basic land. We got a guild gate, not a shock, but that's not the worst thing. Let's see here. Our rare is Scion of the V2 Gazi. Pretty interesting rare for limited. Uh, puts two birds in play when you cast it on a 4-4 body. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely decently, I mean, for the, the casting cost, you wish you got it is very... Uh, it's it's above uh, it's above the par on the curve, so it's a pretty cool card. Right, let's see what else we got. We got two clue stones, Zoria and Golgari. We both know they just add mana for three, and it lets you pay their cost to their colors rather to sack and draw a card. Let's see here. Maze Rusher, which is a really good body creature, just a six three haste for six. A lot of the creatures in the set are pretty interesting because, like, some of them just don't jive well by themselves, which is why this, on a limited uh, standpoint, the set was meant to be drafted one one one. But that's definitely a very powerful card for the color that he's on. Let's see here, a really powerful encounter here: the Scab Clan Giant that lets you fight a random creature when he's played. Uh, and he has a four five, and so he's really just really he's really good at persisting through that, just because of the five in the back on him. Really good card. Let's see what else we got here. Another very powerful one common is the Moa. I gotta read this to make sure I know the five mana creature. Yes. So whenever you play another creature, he gets plus three, plus three. Here in Florida, we have flamingos, but not these things. But they definitely, definitely do get big. Like I saw a couple games last night where people would cast cards or like make centaur tokens off centaur's herald. And just pump the guy between that. It's actually very interesting. He gets really big really fast. I mean, even though it goes away at the end of the turn, he just, uh, like, five. Five is still relevant. All right. Celestine so Cluestone. A rock Farm Skeleton. 4 1 that lets you pay the cost, dredge five cards, and then you can put them back into play. Really good at persisting and. I mean, he has his niche place in Limited, but he's above average for sure. He just has his place. Another one of the, the maze cards, like the Rusher we just saw, which has other effect, is giving your hybrid colored creatures haste. Now these uh, give Vigilance and Flying, respectively, to multicolored creatures. Again, six mana bodies for a 3-5 Flying and a 3-6 Vigilance. The, the blue one is definitely better than the white, but... They're both uh, decent creatures by themselves. Right. Let's see here. The rest of these cards are rather unexciting, so we're not going to talk about them. But I will show you just comments here while I open up our next pack. All right. Dragon's Maze pack number two. Soldier token. Or is a hog guilt All right, so we didn't get another rare again, but that's okay. Well, if we were playing these decks against people, I'd be kind of happy with the packs we open here because we got another Guild Gate, and we got Pontiff of Blight, who is a really, really good card and limited. 
the fact that he gives all your other creatures extort lets you cast a low-costing spell and then get about four, three to four damage out of it, maybe even more depending on how many creatures you have. Uh, he's very powerful because he's a 2-7, which means he's really hard to kill. It's a really good card overall. We like it a lot. I've seen, I've seen that card take over games very easily, multiple times now. I like it a lot. Let's see what else we have here. The Demir Clue Stone. Do we get any other Clue Stones in this pack? Nope. Alright. So, same thing here about our Demir Colors. Gleam of Battle, one of our uncommons. Uh, whenever a creature you control attacks, uh, put a plus one plus one counter on it. That's definitely really good late game, but Force doesn't really go to that point, typically, most of the time. But, I mean, depending on the colors you are, you can definitely splash that and get some more interactions out of that. Card is really, it seems like it could be really powerful, but it really just needs to find its place. This draft format is a lot slower, though, so it probably does have a pretty decent place in the ranks. And it's also the art for one of the playmats of the set, so it's actually really cool. Let's see here. And the black card in the cycle of creatures that if you control two guild gates, they have an added kicker effect. This one gives negative two, negative two. Uh, this one's a really good card because it like basically lets you two for one if you have the fulfillment trigger on it. Uh, so about, that's about it for him. Let's see here. Two, two for two with the tie, you can get lifelink. A removal spell we already saw. The new factor fiction card. Uh, well, almost fact of fiction. Look at the top four and reveal two instant or sorcery. And what else? Gosh, what's this doing? You put them in your hand and put the rest on the bottom in any order. I mean, it's sorcery speed, so it's not fact of fiction, but it's interesting nonetheless. I don't know if it has a place yet, but it's definitely an interesting card. Let's see what else we have here. The red blood rush, uh, plus three, plus three for one. Just a giant growth on a ugly cat creature thing. Creepy art guy we saw. The fog we already saw. The green version of the, um, the two guild gates. Uh, two, four, and gain seven life. One of my other owners, Joseph Crosby, seems to really like this guy a lot. Uh, I wouldn't think this is my favorite one in this cycle, but... I think, it's a, I think it's definitely a decent card, but I mean, with the way the format seems, I'd rather probably just be either creating guys, drawing a card, or trying to kill their guys with a negative two, negative two. Seven life is decent, though. Two four is always nice. Our new split card to look at, protect and serve. Creature gets plus two, plus four, and another creature gets negative six, negative O for the mana. Mm -hmm. Not the best one, but an interesting one nonetheless. Basic combat tricks here, and our 05 Defender. That's basically this pack and this deck. 